Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a vectorized version of the gritty letter in which I showed you how to create in the last tutorial, and there'll be a link to that video on screen in case you want to check that out. Since posting that tutorial, and also the Inspire Speed Art, a lot of people have requested a tutorial on how to vectorize this style, so here it is. Okay, so we're going to start off in Illustrator, and if you've not already got a piece of type or don't know how to create this style, then I'd suggest watching the video which I put on screen earlier. That's, that shows you how to create it, and the style I'm talking about is this kind of style. So it's quite gritty and rough. Um, so yeah, if you, if you don't know how to do this, then go and watch that other video and I'll show you how to create this sort of style. So what you're going to do is get your scanned piece of type and drag it into Illustrator. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And on the thumbnail of the layer you can double click it and where it says dim to 50% make sure that's ticked and what that'll do is make the image a bit brighter and easier for you to go over the top of so I'll just hit OK and then go on a layer above it make sure you've got your stroke set to black or whichever color you want to use and press P on your keyboard to get the pen tool out and I'm just going to I'm just going to do the S for this tutorial because I'm not going to do the whole type because that'd take too long but the S is a good example so I'm going to start off by vectorizing the actual letter itself and I've also got a tutorial for this so um, I'll kind of walk you through it on this one but if you want a more in-depth tutorial I'll put a link to that video on screen now so basically what it is is working with horizontal and vertical anchor points so as you can see you've got horizontal then, then vertical so you're basically building the letters completely out of horizontal and vertical anchor points and this allows you to create much smoother curves like overall so it's just literally a matter of adjusting them and making sure you've got the points in the correct places and you've got the um, anchor arms, these arms that I'm pulling now. You need to get these to the correct places. So as you can see, I've just made an adjustment already to this, to this point because it wasn't in the correct place. I'm just going to click back onto the pen tool, drag the arm out, put a point at the bottom. That's another point as well. You want to put all the, all the anchor points have to go with like the outermost points. So um, see that that one's not quite in the center, but quite at the highest point. So it's like here, it's the furthest out point. This is the fur. This is the highest up point, and then there'd be another one here on the furthest out point. And then same goes for the inside as well. So let's carry on with this. Drag another point out. Oops. Yeah, apologies if um, <laughs> I'm zooming in and out. Well, if I'm not zooming in and out as much as I usually do and look into the detail, because I've just got my new iMac, so I'm kind of still getting used to this magic mouse. It's a bit of a nightmare, but I can imagine it'll be brilliant once I get used to how it works properly. Add another point. There you go, that's a bit off. Pull this one down. Ooh, I'm trying to zoom. Right, let's pull that arm up. Ooh, lag. Okay. It's a pretty nice curve. And I'm going to pull this down by holding Alt and then drag. And holding Shift as well to make sure it stays on the vertical. And let's click around here. That seems about right. Okay, that's, that's the good thing with this as well. It's very easy to go back and adjust points that you've not got quite right. It's very easy to just adjust the whole type by just moving these arms. So as you can see, oops, in a point there. Drag this down a bit because I need it to be more curved. Yeah, that's about right. And I'm going to go for horizontal. You can also use ver um, diagonal points as well. You don't always have to stick to horizontal and vertical. So. But for this, I don't think I'm actually going to have to use any diagonals because that tends to mess up with this kind of style of lettering, these particular styles of lettering, which kind of requires you to use diagonals. But for this, it's pretty much just horizontal and vertical. Pull that down. And occasionally, you'll get some some places like this where it's it just doesn't seem to work. But you just got to persevere, keep keep trying keep trying different things and eventually you'll get it to match like that and also you don't always have to follow your drawing exactly because your drawing might be a bit off and you might not be able to follow it perfectly but 
if you do want to follow your drawing and you can't seem to get it perfect with these horizontal horizontal and verticals then by all means you can go off the horizontal and vertical sort of thing and just make it look as best as possible because that's that's the idea the idea is to get it to look as best as possible so it doesn't necessarily have to be like this but more often than not it tends to make it much better not sure if you can hear them sirens in the background but that's just ruined it a little bit um, see that's a bit of a I'm not too happy with this but for the sake of keeping this tutorial based on this gritty effect I think I'll just leave the type as it is for now and maybe correct that afterwards if I end up using this type so once you've got this what you want to do is you want to, you'll be able to see these white parts on your actual type where the pen's not quite like these bit here where the pen's not quite touched the paper because you've gone quite fast with the pen and these are the bits that you want to replicate with the stroke tool which I'll show you now so I'm just going to click off that layer and lock it and we make a new layer above it now for the strokes press P on the keyboard again and what you're going to do is just kind of follow these so for example that way you have this big one here on the H and then you've got sort of like a small one here that fades out you don't necessarily have to do both of them that depends how how much you want the type to actually resemble the drawing in like this gritty style so I usually tend to stick to at, at most having two next to each other never usually have more because it tends to make it look quite cramped but depends what kind of look you're going for of course so I'll just show you how I do it so I'll start here and with these ones you don't necessarily have to stick to the horizontal and vertical um, sort of idea because a lot of the time it won't work properly so like this we go to the direct select tool to adjust the anchor arms here and you can just pull these and I think I need to move this point a little bit closer to the top Ooh, let me zoom in yep just gonna adjust these arms a little bit to try and make it completely parallel to the letter and you see this is a bit too close so I'll pull it out and now I need to adjust this a little bit see that's pretty much parallel to the outline and what you're going to do then is come over to your stroke tab and if you haven't got that there just click window at the top and come down to stroke and it should open and then from there you're going to click on you won't, you probably won't have all these options by default so click on this little symbol at the top here click on show options it's a, uh, so yeah show options and then this will open up and what you want to do there is go to profile at the bottom and click on the first preset which is width profile one and as you can see it gives it this um, thickness in the middle and makes the ends go to a sharp point and then you can adjust the weight from here as well to make it thicker or thinner so I'm gonna make it quite thick to make it stand out that may be a bit too thick so the size as well of course depends on the size of your the size of the line the the thickness the weight of the stroke sorry depends on the size that you've actually vectorized it so this looks massive here and that's at five point that might look tiny on yours because you might have vectorized it massive so you have to just do what do what works best for you don't just completely copy the settings that I'm using there because it might not work for your piece and once you've got that you'll notice that now it's thicker down here sorry that the gaps thicker down here and then it, the gap goes thin in the middle so now what I'm gonna do is go back and adjust it try and make that match a bit better so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because bearing in mind the type itself is very rough and the types not perfect so that looks all right to me so just gonna click on to unlock the vector layer I'm just doing this to see how it looks click on the vector layer and hit the little arrow thing here to invert the colors and click on the stroke that we've just made and I change the stroke color to white uh, let's just turn off the back, like, background layer just to show you roughly how it looks. So as you can see already it's starting to look like a bit like the drawing. So you just got to add more of these. So let's continue adding them. And oh, I need to make this stroke again. There we go. Lock it and come back up to this one. So that's now white. I'll just leave that white actually. Um, and you don't want to go over the top of these. Like each letter you might not want to overdo it like putting loads of them everywhere but again that comes down to the style that you're going for so I'm just going to add another one here 
and let's click about here. Okay, and let's bring the weight up again and add the um, profile to it. Let's drag this out a little bit. And drag this one in. And that needs to come out a little bit. There we go. Right, that's about right. Make it white. Okay, and I think for this one I'm going to add a smaller one on the outside of it because there was kind of like another thin line. So it's going to make it a bit smaller and just drag it there and then click here. And again, bump up the weight, add the profile, and let's see how it looks. So I think that needs to move it to the left a little bit, and I think it needs a bit more of a curve on it. So I'm just going to drag this to make it a little bit longer. So again, you don't have to completely follow your drawing, both with the actual type itself and with this, because the idea is to get it quite rough. So it's probably better to just go all out on it and just... <laughs> Um, yeah, just mess up, mess it up pretty much. And just put things anywhere, and you'll find that you get quite a nice effect actually. So let's turn the vector inverted again just to see how it looks. See, so that looks quite nice. And let's do the bottom of the S and just put it back there for now. Right, so the bottom one here is quite big. So let's see how we can work with this one. So I'm going to click here, this is, um, oh yeah, I'll show you another thing that you can do as well to help it look a bit better. Click there, click there, that looks about right. And I'm going to bump this one up quite high. Let's go to six. Right, okay, so let me adjust this quickly, oops. Okay, it's this one that needs to change. So yeah, you might have to get used to um, adjusting these anchor points because, oh, that's the problem. See, this isn't close enough compared to the other one. So it needs to be a bit close to the outline. That's what the problem was. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Uh, it might come back to me. All right, let's adjust these. Oh, uh, yeah, it might take you a while to get used to um, actually adjusting these anchor points and where it will lead the line. Because it does take, getting used to the pen tool, a lot of people do find it very difficult. And um, personally, I didn't think it was that difficult. I, like, it was hard at first, but I didn't think it was ridiculous like some people make it out to be. It's just a matter of practicing and using it and using it over and over and over again. So, yeah, that's the best way to learn. Just keep using something over and over. And the tool I was on about a minute ago is Shift W. And what that brings up. Yeah, if you press Shift W, it brings up this tool, and what you'll see is, if you go to the center, there's already um, a point here. If you click, you can actually drag that, and you can see it drags the thickness around the line. But you can also add your own one, so I could click there and adjust it and make it however big, but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this one a bit closer to this side, because on the actual drawing, it was a bit thicker towards this side and went thin as it got over here. So I'm going to drag that up a little bit. And again, you can go back and do this to your other um, lines that you've already added. So when it decides to stop lagging. <laughs> okay, okay, it's lagging. All right, so you could do the same to these, but I think those two, well, these ones up here will look fairly okay. So I'm just going to go down here and add one little line here, because you can see there's a little line on the drawing. So I'm just going to add another one. Uh, let's see. So again, I'm not going to follow the drawing exact. I'm just going to add it where I think it might look all right, like that. Bump up the weight again, and add the profile. I think that looks a bit too thick, maybe. Um, yeah, I'll knock it down a weight. So not all the lines have to be the same weight either. Like they'll vary depending on how you think looks best. So, like I think this line here is a oh the weight on this one's six, and the weight on this one is. Too. So shorter lines tend to be thinner as well because when they're shorter like this, if I bump the weight up to six, it looks very out of place as you can see. <laughs> so I'll put that back down to two. 
and I'm trying to make the curve follow this a bit better, so... Right, yeah, I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so let's flip this around again and see how that looks. And turn off the background layer. And there you go, you have the gritty style thing, gritty style type. So, of course, if you go through and vector the whole piece of type, you'll have a really, really nice piece of like gritty style, which you can then stretch and make however big you want. I hope this tutorial has helped you guys. If there's anything else you want to know about this sort of style, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, let me know if there's any other tutorial ideas that you want me to do and I'll get around to doing them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys.